This will probably be the video where I lose a finger. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. Yet another day during the lockdown knife week. And we're gonna jump right into the Instagram submissions to see who has been using the hashtag for the week. It seems like there are a lot of entries already, so I'm just gonna pull some right off the top here. First one we have from Canadian Canuck 11. It looks like he's got a very well used Emerson here, which I actually don't have in my collection. I dig the Tonto blade overall. This is a very well composed photo, by the way. Sticking with the Emerson waves, we have another one here from Ohio Alchemy Hour. Two more Emersons, and that just sort of solidifies the fact that I should probably add one of those to my collection in the future. So thanks everyone for the submissions. I'm going to try to pick knives that sort of relate to the one that we're looking at today. However, no one has posted a Balasong photo yet. So with that segue, we are taking a look at a Balasong today and no matter the price point, the materials that these are made out of, they're always super fun. I don't care if they're metal or if they're plastic, like the squiddy back here. I don't know if you guys wanna see a video on this. We could make that happen. Anyway, like I mentioned, I'm not super good at flipping. If I'm going to cut myself in a video, this is going to be it. We're not gonna do a whole lot of flipping because of that. But we are going to be taking a look at this blade right here, which has been in my collection for a little while now, probably over a year and a half, and that is the Bradley Kumara. The Bradley Kumara has been around for quite a while now, and I believe it was the second or third generation that really caught my eye and got me interested in Balasongs in the first place. Unfortunately, I was never able to get my hands on one of those because they are sold out just about everywhere. However, this new one will fit the bill. This particular version has a 154cm spear point blade with black G10 handles. It has a cutting edge of 3.5 inches and an overall length of just over 8.75 inches. The blade has a flat grind, a bead blast finish, and it even is stamped as the first production run of this model. Now for the size of this thing, it's still a little bit on the heavy side in my opinion. It's coming in at 5.98 ounces. Some people may like that weight, some people may not, but one thing that almost everyone does like is that this thing is made in the USA. The lockup when you're using the latch, which is not spring-loaded, is actually pretty tight. Of course you're going to have some sort of handle play with a balasong, however this one still locks up pretty nicely. That latch is also swappable so you can move it to the opposite handle if you so choose. So like I mentioned, I have had this thing in my collection for a little while now, and I'm not really sure why I haven't shown it a whole lot of love. You may have seen it in some comparisons here on the channel, but this is its first dedicated review. Now again, I can't stress this enough when it comes to balasongs, I am no expert. I typically like the functionality of knives more than anything else. However, when it comes to balasongs, I basically have these in my collection because they're just so fun to flip around and play with, whether I'm good at it or not. I have a few other balasongs in this box that we can do a quick comparison to, so let's head back to the workbench. Alright guys, here we have a close-up look at the Bradley Kumara. As I'm filming this video right now, these are actually on sale at the link in the description, and they are coming in at just under 100 bucks. In my opinion, this is sort of a mid-level balasong. It's going to be great for any beginners out there who want to learn how to flip and still have a very functional knife. So the overall construction on this thing is great. You have the steel handles here with the slabs of G10 on the outside. This entire thing is held together with some torque bits, so it's pretty easy to take apart and clean, do any kind of knife maintenance that you might need. And it's also offered in a few different variants. I know there's like carbon fiber and a bunch of different colorways. You can get different blade shapes and the possibilities seem pretty much endless. Now the action on this thing is very, very smooth. It's obviously gonna be hard to flip right here in front of the camera. So we'll just do this one carefully. The blade is running on some phosphor bronze washers in there and this thing makes no noise at all. It is extremely smooth and it actually is a pretty good flipper. However, not really for my tastes. So as far as it being just a knife that you would use, of course there is no pocket clip and some people sort of frown at the fact that people actually do use these. I don't see a problem with using a balasong for EDC, however this one's going to be a little bit difficult to carry since there's no clip. The blade however is super functional with the flat grind on here. I definitely love flat ground blades. Spear point makes it a pretty good slicer with this combo here. There you can see the 154cm stamped made in the USA and this is the first production run of these. I don't know if they're going to do more, but as of right now I believe you can still get the first production run 
Although I've had this knife for like a year now. Anyway, as far as battle songs go, this one to me is a little bit small for a battle song. Of course, it is a pretty large knife in the grand scheme of things. However, when you compare it to some other ones out on the market, this one comes in sort of on the smaller side. First up for comparison, I will bring out the Microtech Tachyon 3. This one is a little bit higher quality. This one is running on bearings. We have some aluminum handles, pocket clip, spring-loaded latch with this. That's one thing where I would sort of take a point away from this. Can't really complain with the price point, but as you flip around, this latch just sort of clicks around. Could be kind of annoying, depending on your taste. Back to the Microtech though, we have a really good blade on here. This is M390 steel. And overall, this is definitely a very large knife. Huge cutting edge on this thing and the handles are a lot longer. And when it comes to flipping, I prefer a longer slender handle like this. If we compare them right next to each other, you can tell that the Tachyon 3 just basically dwarfs the Kumara. It may not seem like a whole lot in the handles, however, you have much more real estate when you're flipping this thing around and it just makes it more comfortable for me. Also, if we compare the thicknesses of these two knives, I would say they're roughly the same thickness if it wasn't for these G10 grips on here. These things are extra grippy, the scales that they put on the outside. I was drawn to the previous models of the Kumara because they were just steel. They didn't have any material on the outside. I probably could remove those, however, there's no like nice machining like there was found on the old ones. Just pop the G10 scales off of here as a quick update after filming. And if this knife was a seven and a half before, taking those off to me instantly makes it go up a full point to like an eight and a half. This thing is much slimmer. The look isn't super clean because they're just like holes in here now. It doesn't have some nice machining like the older models did. However, this thing flips way nicer and I definitely like it like this a little bit more. Back to the video. So this thing is a little bit chunkier, a lot heavier. This is actually one of the heaviest battle songs that I have out of everything that I'm gonna show you today. And it really just comes down to personal tastes and preferences. Next up, I will bring in this guy right here. This is the Artisan Cutlery Auto Bally. This is an automatic knife. It's really actually just like a tool blade. And it has an auto mechanism, but it's also a bala song. This thing is pretty cool. I did do a video on this. You can find that in the description down below. This one with all of the steel that this is made out of, the chunky lock mechanism in here obviously adds a lot of weight. And these two are almost identical in weight coming in at about six ounces. Now for a knife this size, I don't think six ounces is too bad. However, I would prefer something a little bit lighter like this. Bigger knife, lighter, easier to carry. That's just me though. For a size comparison, this is also quite a bit bigger than the Kumara. So out of all the Bally's here, this is definitely still gonna be one of the smallest. Next up, since we showed it earlier, might as well bring in the Squid Industries Squiddy again. This thing is super fun to flip around. It's made out of a PVC, really inexpensive. I believe they're coming in at like 45 bucks if you can find them on their website or Blade HQ, wherever you might pick it up. No latch or anything, it just sort of click clacks around and it's a fun little thing to flip. You may have seen me flipping this around over on my Instagram. That again is on the larger side as far as the handle and blade proportions go. These to me are more of a standard size. And then we have this beast right here which does not have a video on it just yet. This is a Benchmade 87 full titanium. It has a magnetic latch on here. It's actually not a spring, that's a magnet that pops it out like that. This one is on bearings just like the Tachyon and it's got a crazy, crazy Warney blade. This thing is just straight up in a league of its own, much more expensive than anything else out here on the table and also very hard to come by. Maybe I will bring you guys a video on that one in a few days. So this is a small spread of Bala songs, all of which I have in my collection for one reason or another, and I really don't think you can go wrong with any of them. This one is of course the most affordable. You're getting decent blade steel, really good construction overall, so if you're okay with the sort of chunkiness of it, thick handles, a little bit heavier compared to everything else, but smaller in size overall, then maybe this would be a good knife. I think it would definitely make a good first starter Bala song. 
So those are my thoughts on the Bradley Kumara. Uh, I think it's a great blade for what it is. It's coming in at a good price point as of right now. And for someone who is looking to get into ballast songs to have something really high quality and smooth, without breaking the bank, I think this is a great first step. If you are just learning with them, of course, a trainer blade is going to be a little bit better and safer for you. However, this is still a functional knife. The full flat grind is great, and although there is no pocket clip, this thing could definitely be put to use if you need it to. If you guys have any questions on the Bradley Kumara series, let me know in the comments down below, and I will try to answer anything as best as possible. A quick reminder to keep using that hashtag lockdown knife week. That way I can feature your photos in the future videos. And other than that, I wonder what knife we're going to move on to tomorrow. Stay tuned and check back to see what is coming next. If you're new to the channel, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every single week and we're doing daily videos this week. As always, thank you guys for watching. I will talk to you in the next one.